pray tonight that you would bless our time. May I not say one word that would grieve you here tonight. Be honored in our midst as you already are. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Before you are seated, would you look at someone next to you and just tell them, I really, really love you. And then you may be seated. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Pastor. Hallelujah. Glory to God. How will they know that we are his disciples? Not by the way we preach, not by the way we prophesy, but by the way we love one another. May we be the demonstration of love in this world. Amen. For me, it's a great, great privilege and a great honor to be standing on this podium. I realize I'm standing in a very seasoned church, a church that's admired not only in our city, but in our nation and also globally. Standing on the stage of a man who shook this nation. I am fully aware of that as I'm standing here today. And I'm extremely privileged for Apostle could see. He was an apostle. He's gone ahead of us and who did a tremendous work. What I love about it, he gives us hope as young men that we can make it. And I bet there are many, many stories and things we don't know that he had to endure. But he did it. He had for heart to the end. Amen. And the great privilege is that what he has done, he has obviously done with his wife. Woman of God, I salute you today. As a matter of fact, Kimmy, would you bring my bag here? Glory to God. You cannot come in the presence of greatness and not sow a seed. I don't know how much money I have in here. If it's not a, a lot, then I will add to it. Mother, if you would just lay your hands and bless me, even if I don't preach tonight, I, you've made my night. I want to bless you with a seed, and I want you to bless me. Ladies of the OCI, morning intercessory, we've prayed and fasted for three days. Pastor, and I said to them, lift up your purse and say, money come to me. Wow. <laughs> Hallelujah. And they shouted very soft. I said, say, money come to me. And they said, money. <laughs> and my two grandchildren was 16 feet somewhere. And I went home and little Maudie said, Oma, Uncle Nicky, I heard how you shouted, money come to me. And you are a witness. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. Chains are falling. God is calling our treasures in darkness. He commands his blessing. Ach, Pastor, somebody came in and gave me a thousand rand. Wow. And I, I tithed of that. And I gave somebody also something of that. And he come yell him net even my back in the area. But oh pastor man. Yeah, you don't mind me kissing you on your cheek. Ik is maar oma van 77 jaar. God bless you and your dear wife. Ach man. Here as a father, I, I worship you, Father God, and I, I honor you for the great privilege, dear Lord, that you have granted unto me this evening, Lord. Thank you that you answer my prayers, O Lord, and I pray for your servant tonight that you will anoint him with a double portion of your anointing, O God, to take the two-edged sword that will cut through marrow and through bone and bring healing and grace upon each of us, his dear wife and his family, 
keep him healthy that no plague will come near his dwelling place and surround him with your mighty angels. And I thank you, dear Lord. Thank you for the help, Lord. Thank you what I say. He will reap a golden harvest in the name of Jesus. And I worship you. By a thank you, Pastor. Hallelujah. Wow. One of our biggest challenges is. Wow. Can you solve them? Can you me? Sorry. You. My God. I'll pray for you for now. Take it for what I will. Hallelujah. Jesus. One of our biggest challenges is we know too many people after the flesh. God must allow us the opportunity to see in the spirit world. He will be astounded who's standing in front of you. Wow. Thank you, Lord. I honor you today. Wow. Phew. Apostle Nikki, thank you for inviting me. Wow, we don't do this for games, beloved. You know, when I get into the presence of someone that has done a lot for God, just lay your hands on me. I want that grace to be able to do a lot for God. And so I'm extremely privileged, extremely honored. Apostle Nikki, thank you. To you and your precious wife, once again, happy birthday, Pastor Melanie. Thank you for inviting me to be part of this amazing conference. You are honored. You are celebrated. And uh, you are a man with a difference. I spoke to somebody the other day about you. Whenever I speak, I will never speak negative about you. Just know that. If anyone says I said something negative, you phone me. Anyone that's here. And... Uh, because I will never dishonor a person. I will never dishonor an environment. And I will never dishonor what many have built. And uh, they spoke about what your dad has done. And that I was going to preach here. And I said, but the ability to keep doing and grow. Not a lot of people have that grace. I salute you. Een ding om te sê, ons mense is maar moeilik. Ja. Nee, hy sê, paard vir hom die gegeem. Hey! Hey, do you know what it takes to continuously walk in the shoes and the pathway of a giant and to keep building? I salute you. I salute you, man of God, for the work that you are doing. Apostle Edgar Michaels, be merciful to me tonight. He's a man of the word. And uh, I don't want to say anything wrong in your presence. Skel me eight more. Ma wees vanaan gracious sam met my. Hallelujah. Glory to God. To all the leaders in this church, your apostle just told me, to me he's an apostle, maybe some of you call him pastor, to me he's an apostle. Uh, he just told me that there's some people that's been here for 50 years, 40 years plus. Hey, I salute you. Loyalty is hard to find. It's difficult. And uh, may God honor you for the seeds of loyalty that you are sowing. And uh, the Lord bless you to every man of God that is also here. Uh, Apostle Ashwin Lewis and your precious wife. My wife preached for them yesterday on marriage. She did a whole seminar. I was in Johannesburg teaching on the subject that the Lord gave me to teach on, the subject of honor. And your apostle asked me to speak on honor tonight. So, Our focus is honor. Amen? It's my assignment to teach on this marvelous subject. I, I brought a few books. Uh, can we bless the people with books? Is that okay? I, I want to give the books to the people. Uh, where's their books? 
Brandon, bring those books here. Make sure Apostle Nikki gets a full set first. Come here. Ek gaan nou preek, my nie waar nie. Ek gaan doen wat op my hart is. Apostle, make sure. Uh, yeah, take one of each. Is that my book that I wrote? Can you let it Sometimes I wonder if I have a lot of grace in this church. Now give that to Apostle's mother. Huh? And then you give this to him. And then just go around and give to everybody. Kimmy, come here quickly and just give to the people books, please. To bless them. Hallelujah. It's my seed into you. I feel that. Hallelujah. Let's give them. It's different books. Uh, I'm going to touch from this one. The first one I wrote, Honor God's Master Key to the Blessing. Hallelujah. I uh, was sitting in a meeting one day, and a man who is a prophet spoke to me, and he said to me, I feel the Lord's given you keys to unlock doors. That wasn't a strange word because my father, Dr. Murdoch, speaks on wisdom and wisdom keys, and so... I understood what he was saying. But then he said this, God will give you a master key that will unlock every door in every environment. Wow. I didn't know what that was. Until one day I sat with Dr. Murdoch in his office a few years ago. And Dr. Murdoch said to me, honor will take you further than your education. Honor will take you further than your genius. He said, honor will take you further than your faith. Man, I knew he dropped something in my spirit. And uh, I came home and I started studying the subject of honor. And just to find, I then discovered it's the master key to every door. If you have failed with your life, I will trace it back to someone you have dishonored. If you succeed in life, it's because of someone you have honored. And so tonight we will talk on this subject of honor. Revelation chapter 4 verse 11. Revelation chapter 4 and verse 11. Glory to God. Up there. Thank you. Thank you, Apostle. For thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things. And man of God, you too, God bless you, man. It's good to see you. Uh, I know you're part of the fellowship here, but you're a great blessing. For thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power. For thou hast created all things. And for thy pleasure, they were created. Anywhere the demonstration of God is in an environment... You should find glory, honor, and power being demonstrated. Jesus prayed this prayer. He said, as it is in heaven, let it be on the earth. The atmosphere of heaven is glory, honor, and power. Now, the fact that he says, thou art worthy to receive glory, honor, and power, does not mean that he finds God worthy. Whether you find God worthy or not, God is worthy of glory, honor, and power. God don't need your permission to be worthy of glory, honor, and power. But he wants us to demonstrate on the earth glory, honor, and power. I was 10 years old when I gave my heart to the Lord. And uh, in a tent crusade with Ati Prince. And uh, I have found that there is a great desire for the glory of God in the church. We worship and we love the glory of God. The glory is in dimensions. But we love dimensions of the glory where God comes and he touches people. And I love it too. I have seen that we love the power of God. We love when God demonstrates his power, where cripples start to walk, blind eyes open. And I love that too. But I've discovered we have not seen much of honor. 
I told one of our leaders one day, I said, you have taught me many things, but you have not taught me honor and the law of the seed. Two things. There are two sides to the gospel. There's not two gospels, but there's two dy dynamics to the gospel. The one is the person of Jesus and the other one is the principles he taught. I can know Apostle Nicky, but not follow what he's teaching. And I won't get these results. So you can love Jesus and not get the results of following what he taught. The person of Jesus creates your peace. But the principles of Jesus create your prosperity. The person of Jesus prepares you for heaven. But it's his principles that cause you to walk on the earth and succeed down here. There are people who have not accepted Jesus, but they work his principles. And they are successful on the earth. There are others who have accepted him as a person, but they broke. Because they won't work the principles that he taught. And so God raises up men and gives them as gifts to the body. Your apostle is a man that helps people to understand the person of Jesus. So he goes out in the tents and he explains to them what Jesus has done and who he is. But once they are brought in, there are other men who must teach them principles. Because in the kingdom of God, you should be flourishing. You should be going forward. You should be doing well. I'm one of those pastors that has to teach you of the principles. Not everyone enjoys the fact that you have to teach them principles. Because what principles often does, it deals with the condition of your heart. Proverbs 29 verse 23 says, A man's pride will bring him low. But honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. You will never advance in this kingdom. Unless you become humble. The Bible says the Lord resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. What does that mean? I've met people already in my years of serving the Lord that says, That's not humility. Humility is not what you think of yourself. Humility is seen in how you respond to others. How you treat others tells us what you think and if you are humble. If you are rude to other people, there's a devil in you. The first person to show dishonor that we know of is the devil. He wanted to be God himself. He wanted to be like God. He could no longer submit under an authority. You will find one of the greatest problems with people that the devil has influenced. They hate authority. The Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 28, you were beautiful in all your ways until your wisdom was corrupted. The devil has a corrupted wisdom. His number one strategy with mankind is to deceive them. He did it with Adam and Eve. Did God really say so? It was a deception. So he dishonored authority, got kicked out of heaven, came here and influenced man to be people of dishonor. You might not know this, but I want to say to you, you have been trained better in dishonor than what you've been trained in honor. The world we live in is a world of dishonor. He came to earth and he did this. You see, the devil does not have to show you to him per se. That's his deception. If he tells you, worship me, you'll say, ah, no, 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 no. I don't want to worship you. All he has to do to get you is to move you away from God. Then he has succeeded. The devil's problem is not so much with you. He hates God. And the more he hurts you, the more he hurts the heart of God. 
So if he can trick you, he wants to hurt God. So he says to Eve, you see, once you eat of that fruit, you will be just like God. He didn't show Eve to him. He showed it to herself. Eve loved that. I also want to be a God. And the pride rose up in her as well. And God said, I cannot deal with this. Anytime you go against an instruction from an authority, you are dishonoring. Anytime an authority gives you an instruction and you don't obey it. Let me just say this for free. By the way, if you're working in an office for your boss and he must give you the same instruction twice, he should pay you off your salary. Because you're making him work twice as hard. If I must give you the same instruction five times, you must be on an allowance. Because you talk to children five times about one thing. <laughs> Anytime you go against an instruction, you have dishonored your authority. So he shows you not to himself, per se, the devil, but away from God. And he builds pride in your own heart. A man's pride will bring him low. Now, we all know that Proverbs speaks about a fool is full of pride. Proverbs 26 verse 1 says, As snow in summer and as rain in harvest, so honor is not seemly for a fool. What betekan die? Kom, ek sê gauw, as ek het nou een kleerling vertaal. Ons moet een kleerling bybel skryf, apostel. Ons een mense gaat sikere goed, Pieter verstaan man. As ons in die kleerling, you know. Die Engels is so, soos, die Engels, denk jy somtijds ons mense kry die Engels lekker nie man. Paulus skryf, hy sê, Alexander the coppersmith has done me much harm. Maar ons lees wat hy of het niks is nie. Maar die Afrikaanse kleerling vertaling sal sê, Alexander, hy fark het my lelik ingedoen. My slecht ingedoen. Nou verstaan ons mense, Pieter. Hy was hier goeie man nie, man. Sê. The devil's out to take your blessing and he does it by deceiving you. The, the Bible says in Proverbs 4 verse, 4 verse 7 that wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, you must get wisdom. With all you're getting, get understanding. Exalt her wisdom and she will promote you. She will bring you to honor when you embrace her. She will give to you a head and ornament of grace and a crown of glory will she deliver unto you. Wisdom. This is the challenge that we have. When we talk about wisdom, it's not only godly wisdom that is out there. In James chapter 3 and from verse 11, you'll start reading where he says there's a wisdom that causes strife. It is an earthly wisdom and it is devilish. And then Paul writes in 1 Corinthians and uh, chapter 1, chapter 2, he speaks about the wisdom of this world is not the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God, he says, is in a mystery. It's not understood by everyone. Jesus in Matthew 13, his disciples came to him. His disciples said, why do you speak in parables? He said, because it is for you to understand the mysteries of the kingdom, but not for them. So I must tell them stories because they don't understand spiritual things because it's in mysteries. And so some things I will say to you today might seem strange to some people. Because it's in a mystery. I will say things that might not sit nice with you. Because you have to get the revelation of honor. To understand the kingdom standard. And the kingdom culture of honor. A world is filled with different ways of honoring. And uh, I went to South Korea one day. And as I entered the house. They said no, no, no. You can't come in. You must take your shoes off. That's the culture. You are rude when you walk with your shoes in there. 
When you go to South Korea or Asia anywhere, make sure that your socks has no holes in them because you're going to have to take your shoes off. What they also do when they greet, they bow. We don't have a problem with that until it gets to the kingdom. I want to submit this to you. The glory of God brings the demonstration of God in different facets. Healing, miracles, things happen. There's dimensions of God's glory. Honor is the side that creates order. And order creates riches and wealth. Proverbs chapter 8 says, I wisdom, I carry riches and honor with me. 13 times in the Bible, they walk together, riches and honor. Wisdom is a she in the Bible. It's referred to as a she. Because whatever wisdom you have determines what you give birth to. So there's different kinds of wisdom. Now the Bible says in Proverbs 2 verse 10, when wisdom has entered your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul. So wisdom comes and it enters your heart. The thing is, we don't know what kind of wisdom has entered you. Is it godly wisdom? Is it man's wisdom? Or is it demonic wisdom? And so sometimes you have to test before you pass out your driver's license you have to go and learn signs what does a hairpin bend because if you're going at 180 which you shouldn't towards a hairpin bend you're going to kill you and a few people and a lot of people's going to get hurt because you couldn't read the sign that warned you in the same way we are able to read signs one of the way to see what kind of wisdom has entered mankind is to see how they respond to authority Godly wisdom never corrects upward. In the kingdom of God, you have no authorization to correct up. You are a rebel. I'll back that now with scripture. Human wisdom wants to honor people when they feel honored. Respect for me, I respect it for you. That's human wisdom. Demonic wisdom always rebels against authority. Always. So when you see a rebel or someone that speaks against authority, you must know there's a devil in the house. It's a sign. Let me say this to you. Even if your correction is soft, you're out of order. Even if it is just, who come here for Pastor Clint at Pitpana? That's a correction. Even in soft words. You are a rebel. And you must know as a pastor, you're busy with a rebel. Because in time to come, that rebellion gets stronger and uglier. Wisdom. The wisdom you have, godly wisdom, gives you the ability to recognize difference. Difference in people. Can I come down? Speaking louder than you Difference in people. Difference in a moment. Difference in opportunities. One day I took my parents uh, to George. They were married for 38 years. And I told my wife, they've never been on a honeymoon. Let's take mommy and dad. We took them there in... Uh, George there in the mountains, very nice place. And on my way there, I was still in business then, I called a few clients up and I said to them, I'd like to meet with you, I'm going to be in George. And then the Lord said to me, how often are you alone with your parents? This is the difference of a moment. This moment might never come again. I canceled all my meetings. And I thank God I did because the moment never came again. My parents both has gone home to be with the Lord. But I have great memories of spending a good weekend with them. With no interruptions. Wisdom is the ability to recognize difference. Difference in people. You see, your apostle, 
He looks like everybody else, but he's not like everybody else. Your wisdom gives you the ability to see that. Moses comes to the burning bush. And the Lord says to him, Moses, take off your shoes because the ground you're standing on is holy. Moses didn't see the ground was holy. God had to tell him the ground is holy. To Moses, all the ground looked exactly the same. He didn't look any different. God had to tell him. You see, it's not what's happening in your mind. It's what happens in the mind of God. God put the ground and made it holy. Your apostle has been set aside in the mind of God. Your opinion and what you see. Mensen say, my draw broek net so sick. I'm teaching you to become blessed and to walk in the blessing of the Lord. And I'm going to tell you today why some men have risen and others have never excelled. I've had men who had greater anointings than myself. Greater anointings, but they never went to the stages that God takes me to. One word, honor. Wisdom is the ability to recognize difference. Honor is the willingness to reward someone for their difference. That's honor. I see your difference and I want to reward you for your difference. The Bible says in uh, Psalm 8 verse 5 that the Lord has crowned us with glory and honor. Every human is crowned with glory. Not God's glory. He shares his glory with no man. But there's a glory on man. There's a beauty on man. It is for you to find that crown of glory and to celebrate that crown of glory and to say, this is your difference. When I sit in a conversation with people, I listen for pain because I want to heal where there's pain. I want the Lord to use me to heal where there is pain. I listen for information of their difference. What makes you different? Because that allows me to honor you. If you're only listening for flaws, you'll never honor people. Honor is the willingness to search for the gold that's hidden in someone. Every human is flawed. Every human. But gold is hidden in the dust. Your ability to move the dust away. Your life will change if you find the gold that's hidden in another human. It's rich. Story of Samson is an interesting one. Remember when the lion came for him? Was walking and the lion came and he killed the lion. Let the lion lay there. And I think about a week later he came back and he was hungry. There's a lot of trees there where the bees can make their honey. They made it in the carcass of the lion. Sometimes what you must eat is not in something you enjoy the smell of. I like you for me. Like you say styly. Hey, something you need could be hidden in someone you don't enjoy. That's how God works to get you humble. Your miracle could be standing right in front of you. But you don't know how to talk to him. They but, you see, prayer is not the seed for money. Hoeveel mensen het gebid vir geel en jylle is millionaires nou? Prayer is not the seed for money. Problem solving is. When you honor someone, you already solve a problem for them. You look beyond their flaws and you have the ability to extract the gold in them. It makes you a different human. I have a lot of pastor friends that go in different places. Half of them tells me, you're my best friend. They tell me you're my best friend. It's the experience that honor brings. Because honor is a fragrance and dishonor is an odor. They wonder who come niemand for you will eat for lunch. Zij wonnen. Zij zo kwaad. Alle bel nooit van mij niet.
This honor is an odor. Honor is a fragrance. People want a fragrance in their environment. The greatest way to live a life of honor, in my opinion, is you must know who you are and know who you are not. In every environment you go into, know who you are and know who you are not. I've seen many great gifted people get kicked out of an environment because he thought when he got there, he stole the authority. He's already left his environment where he was in authority. He's coming to a different place where there's another authority, but he still want to talk like he's the authority. He forgot there's somebody else that's a higher authority. You want to live a life of honor? You must know who you are and know who you are not. And if you don't know who you are, go ask someone who will honestly tell you who you are. My wife has an interesting uh, uh, sheet she brought up, an exercise that she does w her work, and we did it for the church people. So what we did was we write on there like faithfulness and um, what are the things that you write on there? And then, then you must rate yourself. How, how people, how you deal with people, how much people love you, how much, and you must rate out of 10. You see? And then the rest of the group, must rate you. How you deal with people, how they feel around you. It's a shock. It's a shock. Say to yourself, 9 out of 10. That one that you have lost, that is what the other you give. A 1. At one stage, I employed just over 70 people. In my company, it wasn't the people who worked for me the longest that got promotion. It was the ones who honored me the most. It's not how long you're serving. It's how honoring you are in your serving. They blaze stray. They will not correct. They will not. As your environment. Can I talk with you? It might just be sensitive, man. So I will not always all this. See, by us, by us, to pray, I guess, Rafa, by us, yo. They come from the other kick up. What they want, man. Now they tweet at you. Now say they, you are doing good. Reach in, man. This is what you must do. But as us, it's fun. As the good, what they do, they can do it. What they weg from us is, but they will here come and they here blow. Who come and they da weg? Is a terrible thing. Honor will take you far. You see, let me say this to you. In Buckingham Palace, there's no anointing. But there's honor, there's order, and there's wealth. That's what honor brings. The church is a place where there's a very little honor. One day I was praying and I, the Lord said to me this to me. He will stay in an environment when there's preaching, where there are sinners, because the Holy Spirit wants to convict of sin. But when believers get together and there's dishonor, he leaves. That's why we sit in church board meetings and we pray, oh God, give us your wisdom. But the way that the yak and the pastor prat, the only thing is lang kalweg. There's no honor there. Pastor, but how many were killed? That is what you just said. It was the end of the month. Whoever has the money, listen to me, makes the rules. You know why the world don't take us serious? Because we don't have money. They took a census in 2010. How much money the church has taken up globally in a year. Tithes and offerings, building funds. And just saw globally in general how much the church took up. 
The church took up 200 billion US dollars in one year. In that same year, the New York Stock Exchange was trading 1.3 trillion in a day. A day. Now you might think it's strange, but the reality is they have no problem in rolling out a red carpet when someone gets out of a car. But we do. Wie is hy hieran? Is hy hieran die jyre? En ons dan vir hom soe. Wie is hy hieran? I'm telling you why you're struggling. And until the wisdom of God enters your heart, where you become a person of honor, God cannot change things for you. You see, where the glory comes, it's a lot to do with God. When the power comes, it's a lot to do with God. But when honor comes, it's got everything to do with you. Honor is a decision that you must make. That you will live a life of honor. God will knock at your door and cause you and want you to be a humble person. But you decide that. God don't decide that. There's a few things God don't decide. I'm astounded at how people say everything that happens on the earth has been planned by God. I'm astounded. Is that what you tell a mother who lost a two-year-old child when a drunk driver drove and killed the baby? Don't, don't worry, God's in control. No wonder the world starts to ask us, where was God when things went wrong? We've dishonored God the way we've represented him. God, listen to me, does not decide the quality of your life. I wish I could tell you that, but your decisions do. Pastor Nikki has 10 crusades. He makes an altar call for a lot of people, but not everyone comes. It's those who made the decision to come to God. God is a God of sequence. What you do first determines what God does next. Many people are praying. It's a God of sequence. God don't save you until you lift your hand. Save me. And he responds to that. But when things go wrong for us, I say, you must look at yourself. And ask, why am I where I am? You can't even recognize and see the grace and the anointing on other people. A daily in the building as he has a nook salving. There's something wrong with us. You will never go and sit under another man's ministry to receive from him. You don't go until you are preaching. Honor. Honor. I celebrate what's in you. I want to reward you for what's in you. In this book that you have, I write there, where does honor come from? Why is the earth filled with dishonor? Why is honor so difficult for us? The difference between honor and respect the difference between worship and honor. It's a good thing. No, we don't worship a man. I also grew up in that. I said to the Lord, I never want to, a fool would want to worship a man, isn't it? I said, God, I don't want to worship a man, but I don't want to lack on my honor towards a man either. You see, honor is the willingness to reward difference. Apostle, there's a lot of women in your life, but only one gave birth to you. That's her difference. You can never be in competition with Apostle's mother because you solve a different problem. You have a difference. He loves the women in the church, but you, his wife, nobody else. That's your difference. And if one woman said to me, I treat everyone the same. Everyone. No, I treat everybody the same. I had to ask her this. 
how does your husband feel about you sleeping with all the neighbors? <laughs> how does he feel? How does your husband feel about you, you making breakfast for all the neighbors? Husbands. Now, what do you mean? I said, you just said you treat everyone the same. If you've treated everyone the same, you've honored nobody. Honor rewards difference. Honor is a celebration of difference. Is it an amen of Aina? So I asked the Lord, give me two points. Now I will finish with this. I asked the Lord the difference between worship and honor. One day it was about two o'clock in the afternoon. I was busy praying. By the way, Dr. Murdoch says, if you're in ministry and you read less than 20 chapters a day, you shouldn't be in the ministry. Just to by the way. He reads 40 chapters a day in the word of God. He goes through the Bible once a month. He says that to stretch us. See, men of God must tell you things to stretch you. If you didn't hear that, you would be happy with your two scriptures you're reading a day. Pastor Ray Lofli is coming. I love what he always says. Ek het my skrifie was jou na. So, I was praying about two in the afternoon. And I tell you why I was looking at the time. Because Bishop Dagu at Mill says, don't pray without a watch. You see. Want zy sê, ek gaan nou vir die eer bid. Zy karab a sandal a bra. Die sweet tap jou af, jong. Jy. Zy denk, hier ek nou lekker gebid vir die eer. As jy die watch kyk, is het maar tien minute. Zy het nog lang om te gaan. So I learned, I pray with a watchman, so I can see. So it was about two o'clock. And while I was praying, the scripture came to mind. The Father seeks those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. And then the Holy Spirit started ministering to me. He said to me, you see, worship comes from the spirit of man. Worship has to do with the intimacy. But honor comes from the soul of man. That's where your decision making is. Honor has got to do with servanthood. Worship has got to do with intimacy. The problem you have is you only have one body to demonstrate what your soul or your spirit is feeling. You don't have a body for your spirit and you don't have a body for your soul. So when I come and I kneel before Ma and say, bless me, it's the same posture of prayer. So your mind might think, I am but the fro. But you have to understand where it's coming from. It's coming from a soul of humility. In Revelation, John falls in front of the angel. The angel says, get up and don't worship me. Ah, but he's using the word worship. In the book of Acts, Cornelius falls in front of Peter. He says, get up and you can't worship me. In 2 Kings chapter 4, there's a woman who Elisha prophesied into, said, you will have a child next year this time. We know the child dies. And then she comes to him afterwards when the child is dead. The Bible says she fell on her knees in front of him and held his feet. And the Bible says Gehazi, who we all know, was a man of dishonor. Tried to push her away. But the prophet said, leave her. Because her soul is vexed. He could see that this was not an act of worship. This was an act of a broken soul. But it's the same posture. I've had someone tell me one day, I don't honor people, I just honor Jesus. You're unscriptural. Bible says in 1 Peter 2, 17, you must honor all men. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. And honor the king. If you only honor Jesus, you're out of order. 
out of the kingdom order. And the reason why you'll say that, there's no measuring stick to show how much you're on him. It's like saying, how can you say you love God who you don't see? But your brother who you see, you don't say you love him. It's a condition of the heart of humility. So God will put your honey in a stinking lion. Honor is not worship. And we are so quick to criticize it. This world is filled with dishonor. Stick on, hoi on, slaan on. Allah goes amo. Kijk hoe halupai. Je nacht toe sê, iemand aan die kerk vir my. Hey, sê ex-vrouw Jaag om in een baksteen van die patta. Hij zei Ali man. Hij zei, zei Jamie na onderkleren aan die pad af. Ik denk nee, dat is niet een kleerlang volk jong. Nee, dat is een level. Toen lach ik net zoals jullie lach. Toen zei de heilige geest met twee weg is. You see how full of dishonor you are. You laugh at it. You laugh at dishonor. Is that not honor? It's total dishonor. I asked the Lord one day to help me with my parents because the Ten Commandments is about one word, honor. The first four is about honoring God and the other six is about honoring man. But the first one he gives about honoring man is about your parents. And then he said, you will live long upon the earth. You'll be very blessed. But the thing is, my father see a maklaka onim. I had a lot of resentment towards my father. And then the Lord told me one day, unless you dig deep and start to speak well of your father, I cannot bless you. You have portions of blessings here and there. But that, is the f that was the second decision I made about your life. I said, wow. He said to me, the first decision I made about you is what problem you'll solve in the earth. Because every human that's been created was created to solve a problem. That's not your choice, that's a discovery. You discover why did God create me. Everything created was created to solve a problem. The chair you're sitting on solves a problem. This building solves a problem. Someone saw a problem and they created a solution. God saw a problem in the earth and he created you. You're here to solve a problem. Your provision and your finances is linked to solving the problem. Then he said to me, the second decision I made about you is who will I use to get you into the earth? Your parents was my choice. And every time you speak against your father or your mother, you're speaking against my choice. Every time you speak against them, you rebuke me for giving you that choice. Wow. No wonder many of us has walked through this life and then we build a little, then it falls. Then we build and it falls. Nothing is growing because there are things we have to go back to to correct. I, my dad has gone home to be with the Lord. Oh, most of you probably would know my brother, Pastor Chris. He was my daddy's, in my eyes, my daddy's blue-eyed boy. He wouldn't say that. My ours hit my favorite, no? He was my daddy and my sister, Mary Ann. But my father would give him things to do, man. He see bankar, can will go die. So he always felt, he's the third eldest, but he acts like he's the eldest. I think as a may pass it. Zij tweede naam is my paas naam, Clarence. So Christopher Clarence, so ek weet jy of het daar is. But somehow was hy my paas a favorite. En ek is na hom. Het lyk my pa was kwaad toe ek gebore is. Jere, zij ook nog. Ja, saas. Ek denk hy toe een meisie verwacht man, hier kom ek nog een brood eter. Die seens iets moes die man nie man. Hey. 
voel ek nou, nee man, my pa het iets tien my man. Jy sê, nou my oudste broer, het ook maar baie beklee met my pa. Toe ons nou nog, hy het karate en al die goed gedoen. As hy nog so een of twee tricks wil kry, slaat my pa vir hom. Dronk. Wat my oudste broer, sal nog altyd goed van my pa sê wat negatief is. I'm helping you. I'm telling you my story, but I'm helping you. And then the Lord said to me, you cannot sit with him anymore to talk about your father. You have to get into the presence of people who admired your father and let them talk to you so that you can change your heart and your conversation about him. He's gone home. But you see, the thing is this, let me say this to you. Moses, Moses het a system wat a prophetess is. Sy sê, sy kan my sê, die vrou trouw nie. En die broer sê ook nog, hey, Moses, sy kan nie die vrou trouw nie. Ek weet nie, oos mense is waar hare jong, ek weet nie of sy sisters ook so was sê. Van het was a swat vrou man, wat Moses gevat het. Moses, verstaan, dit is my sister man, familie praat maar so van my kaam, en dit is alright, jy sê, maar God verstaan het nooit niks, Moses sê, dit is my my sister, ja nee, ons trui maar onder my kaam, is maar so, maar God, verstaan het nooit niks, God sê, weet jylle wie die is, ten wie jylle praat, jylle sê maar, is jylle broer, Dit is my servant wat ek gekies het. God. God. Heids dis honor. And his action towards dis honor is very strong. Very strong. You see, let me tell you this. You might think when you're arguing with your pastor, with your boss, with your parents, dat sy het gewen, want sy stap ook uit, en sê sê, ek het om nou lekker vertel, you might think, that you've won, but in time to come, you will see how much you have lost, I know you've taken from your father, but I pray that your family, and everyone here, will understand who you are, they, they shouldn't look at you after the flesh. Paul said, no, no man after the flesh. They must know you by the spirit. And you might have the mercy and the grace for them. But God will not do well when they dishonor you. Because you are God's man. No matter who says what, you are God's man. God don't need their approval to make them, to make him your man. You don't decide whether he's worthy of honor or not. God has already decided that. I said I'll say some things which makes you feel uncomfortable. God has already decided. You don't decide if your parents are worthy of honor. Your pa kan a dronk lap gewisit. You don't decide if he's worthy of honor. God has already decided he's worthy of your honor. takes humility, you see, to honor another human, pride will stop us from honoring people, and the moment you are full of pride, God resists you, no wonder you're not blessed, no wonder you're struggling, van wonder jou kinders kan nie na die jyre toe kom nie, anders hoed jy met jou man praat, sister, your level of authorities, and you must know how God responds when you fight authority. Let me say this to you. I think in my opinion that because of what Lucifer did when he rose up against God, God always is affected when he sees a subordinate fight an authority. Always. 
Now, I'm going to say this, and this can be strong, but this is ask the Lord to give you this revelation. An authority can be wrong, but the moment you correct him, you've become wrong. So who must correct authority? Authority has authority. Subordinates don't correct authority. You might be in the devil's order. You might be in Oprah's order, human wisdom, but you're not in godly order. And it's affecting the blessing of the Lord upon your life. Let me say this, wherever there's honor, there's favor. Where there's favor, there's blessing and money. Ek wil ook een ouderling in die kerk raak, maar zij is een beskofste mens. Zij wil van paaste in timme duid. Met jou drie rand offering. Does God want to be honored? Yes, God wants to be honored. I know you don't have a problem with that, so I'm dealing with the portions you have a problem with. I want to help you. Amen? This is what God does in his wisdom. He chooses men. And then he says in Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 6, wisdom comes from God. Out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Right? And then he says in Jeremiah 3.15, and I will give you pastors according to my heart. And they will teach you with knowledge and understanding. You know where God's wisdom is for you? It's in the one that must teach you. You know why God does that? To deal with your pride. Ek lees ook my Bible, man. The thing is, you cannot unfold the mysteries of God. Paul fra in 2 Corinthians. Who is Paul? Who is Apollos? Sien Paul kan die vraag. Maar ons kan nie die vraag nie. Paul het meeste van die Nieuwe Testament geskryf. Hoe sê ons, wie is Paul, wie is Apollos, is maar God wat die dinge laat groei. Hey! The fact that your man of God is humble. Moen jy my sleeg aan kijkje. Because it's what God puts inside of him. So men of God will say, no, it's not about me. Don't worry about me. Don't, don't let that deceive you to think that you can talk to him like you want to. Some people hate titles. I love it. I tell you why I love it. It reminds me who I'm talking to. As ek begin Nikki voor en toe en acht en toe, then I forget who I'm talking to. As ek begin Edgar hier en daar, then I forget who I'm, so so manne sê, moet nie vir my nog apostel sê nie, that's his humility, that's beautiful, but I mustn't forget who I'm talking to. My daughter said for me, Daddy, uh, Auntie Lynn said, I mustn't call her Auntie because I make her feel old. I said, you call her Auntie. Because you must remember who you are talking to. The day you take Auntie away and you say, Lynn, you talk like it's your friend. Honor. Why some people rise and others never. Not about your gifting. Not about how smart you are. It's about getting into an environment and showing honor. There's favor there. If I want to go far in this church, I must get him to like me. And I must get his wife to like me. And I must get his mother to like me. And I must get his, the people around him to like me. If I want to go far. Many people are, how did you get so close to Dr. Murdoch? Honor. I don't fight the people he chose. Because the moment the people fight... Your wife or whoever you have chosen, they dishonor you. The moment they speak against any of the leaders, now nah, I see a leader, nie. Pastor, it must have fought. I'm telling you why you don't have money. I'm telling you why you are not blessed. The Bible says, Jesus says in Luke 16, if you cannot. If you cannot handle mammon, who will give you the true riches? How will you ever work with the anointing? 
You don't know how to. One day the Lord said to me, I have taught you honor in the natural because I want you to succeed in the spirit world. You see, if you don't understand honor in the natural, you'll think there's no ranking in the spirit. We are all equal in Christ, but we have not all been graced equally. Wisdom gives you the ability to recognize. Wie van jylle het ooit so'n kek gebouw? Kijk nou, as jy nou, as jy nou, wat nie sê, sê, dit is een boom geplant hier. Kijk jy, as jy nou, bykie brein zet, na, dan sal het vir jou sê, man. Dit is my so'n great man, die man. Nie net om het te bou nie, but to maintain this whole thing. Hier kan sê nie, jou huise budget ran nie, Wat van die ding? But pride will tell you, my net pastor, Nicky, man. No wonder why God can't elevate you and take you places because you don't have the ability and the wisdom to recognize the difference of the people that God has sent into your life. The subject of honor I can speak about probably for a whole year, continuously. I've written a few books about it. My last book, no, not second last book, Jesus, the Son of Honor. The Lord said to me one day, if you want to understand how to honor a father, look at the life of Jesus. But this book, I wrote, Honor for Kids, because I really believe if you have not trained your children in honor, you have trained them to fail. If you've taught your kids in honor, you have taught them success. You have taught them to succeed. You have taught them to do well. They might not have the greatest education, but they'll go further than people that has great education. Honor is the master key to the blessing of God upon your life. I want to say to you today, don't, especially in the kingdom of God, there is one thing I'm closing with. This. There is one thing that the devil got right. Apostle Nikki. he did this. He got the world and everyone in the church to speak against men of God. I like you, your pastor, but you pray for another pastor. I'm both a young competition as with other pastors. This is not a competition. We complete one another. But this is the thing. This is the strategy of the devil. Wherever men of God is dishonored, the anointing on that man of God cannot work. God gave men of God anointings to break yokes over people. And so wherever his anointing is not honored, it cannot help the people to break free, break through, because you're sitting there critically. You become familiar. Even Jesus himself came to his hometown and the people said, what wisdom is this? And then somebody else said, but this is the carpenter's son. We know his sisters. We know his brothers. The Bible says he could do no mighty work amongst them. It's the strategy of the devil to get dishonor and familiarity into your heart so that the anointing of your man of God don't work for you. Offering. The pastors is net wo geld. Hey, do you know what you're doing? The anointing of that man cannot work for you. Church, we need to get back to restoring honor in the house of God. The government is busy taking it out of our schools. It's taking it out of our homes. Where parents cannot hit children anymore. As om wat ek pak gekreed, wat ek so mooi hier voor julle staan. Spare the rod and spoil the child is a honor scripture. God wants to bring us back where we start, not just to honor our pastor, but we honor one another. We can see the difference in one another. You see, honor is not only up, honor is to your peers, and honor is also down. The Bible says you mustn't provoke your children to anger. That's an honor scripture.
When I come before a child, every time that's that height, I go on my knees and I speak on the level of the child. It's my honor to that child. I correct my children for this reason. I want their future to be great. Correction upward is wrong. But if your pastor never corrects you, he's dishonored you. Because correction from a leader has got to do with your future. Hallelujah. If you are here today and you say, Pastor, you see, out of ten things, you can do nine things right. But the one thing you're doing wrong would be sabotaging the blessing. Jesus is a mooi karma. Jelle apostel het a mooi karma. Moe nooit dat team praat nie, as hulle het nooit na jou toe kom nie. Sê net, hier apostel sy karma. Eendag wil ek ook so rei. Glory to God. You see, what you celebrate starts to come to you. What you speak against moves away from you. And when you say, Lord, help me. Yes, but you see, if you look at his car, die car kan hoe mooi lyk, haal net een tyje af, we gaan in nerens. You got nine things you're doing right, but the one thing you're doing wrong is causing you not to move. I'm going to say, hey, just mooi jong, zij smart jong, maar zij gaan niet voor en toe nie, van ons moet jou tyje recht maak. Lucifer could worship, but when he lost his honor, he lost his place. I know you know how to worship, but the fact that you've been stabbing people in the back, that you've not been a person of integrity, has cost you dearly. Zij sit ook hier en zij worship elke ochtend. Samen die kinders van die Heere gaan sy huis toe as sê, wat dink sy van die boodskap wat pastor vir ochtend gebrek het? It has cost you dearly. Wat dink sy as iets fout met die Heere? Die Heere respond aan jou dishonor. If you are here today, sê pastor pray for me man. I want to be what Paul told Timothy, a vessel of honor. Fit for the master's use. You see, Jabez was almost break with Jabez. The Lord expanded his territory. The Lord, but the first thing that the Bible says from Jabez, he was more honorable than his brethren. That's why God blessed him. Pastor, pray for me. I want to be a vessel of honor. I have missed it in places, and I need God to really. Help me and touch my heart. It's going to be difficult, but God can help me. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand because I want to pray for you. Stand to your feet. Let me pray for you. If that's you, I want to be a vessel of honor. I want to know how to talk like God talks. I want to see the difference in people. Glory to God. Thank you for your hearts of honor. Thank you for honoring God, even with this request that I am making. Whole church is standing. Kabroshan dala bagedi yosto. Kirende na mo sheketila yasta. Okay, I want to do one more thing, Apostle. Honor is not just words. Remember when God said, "You honor me with your mouths." But your hearts are far from me. Because what's in your heart, that's where the action is. You, you act on what's in your heart. Sometimes you can say many things with your heart. So Apostle, you and your wife, will you come stand here by me, please, man? Come to the front. I want you to get a seed in your hand, a financial seed. God helps me again, I will teach you about the financial seed. Stand in front here, Apostle. With, uh, just. I want you to say, Lord... This is my act of honor towards my man of God. Faith without works is dead. And if you're standing here for prayer, I know God's going to touch you. But I want you to put the seed in your hand. Even if that card machine is available and you go and say, this is for Pastor Nikki. I want God to help me. I want to start with my man and woman of God to honor them. If that's you, I want you to come. I want you to put finances right here in front of them. As a blessing. This is not a game. Beloved. I have seen too much of the miracle working power of God. May God honor you. May God honor you. Thank you. Bring the basket. Yeah. 
la prokoshaya baganda lemea this is your honor towards a servant of god lord if i've missed it if i've said something even in my ignorance the seed must talk in the throne room of heaven for me help me help me lambroste agadanda glory to god it's your seed of honor towards a man of god god will honor you The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. May God honor you. God will honor you. As you bring your seed of honor. Hallelujah. Ah. Oh. Glory to you. just pray over them. Yeah, you can continue. Let me pray. Lagiosto mamambe de deleste ke yando. Brista tatande legidiosto. Father, these are your people. Honor has been born in your heart. Heaven is a place of honor. We want to walk with the fragrance of honor in the earth. We know where there's honor, there's blessing, there's favor. There's increase, there's multiplication. It's the rewards of honor. I pray that as your people sowed into the life of their apostle and his wife, that this week they will experience supernatural breakthroughs. Doors that has been shut for a long time would start to open. The phone call they've been waiting on will come this week because you will honor them as they've honored your servant. You say in your word, those who honor me, I will honor them. Honor your people, Lord. Honor your people. Break them through. Bring them the contracts they've been trusting you for. As they walk with the hearts of honor to serve you, to serve this man of God, and to serve the kingdom. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen and amen. Wow, it was so blessed.